Hey, welcome back to another video right here on Free Will Photos. Today, we are looking at the opacity and the flow options inside of the brush adjustment tool. Now, if you're new to On One or you're looking to get On One Photo Raw, uh, check the description box below. There's an affiliate link at no additional cost to you, but it does assist with helping this channel continue to grow and me continuing to produce these videos. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. On the screen, what you see here are a few different options. I already went ahead and added these. We're gonna recreate them, but I wanted to show you what they look like uh, up front. So as we start to go through the brushes and making the strokes, you'll understand kind of what's going on. So the top one, we have opacity at 100% and 100% flow. Now, the key note here is how many times it takes for you to go over a particular area, but also how many clicks you have to put in to go over into the next area. The clicks are outlined a little bit better in the graph that's in the middle or the example that's in the middle with the opacity set to 25% and the flow set to 100%. When you put your opacity to 25%, what you get here is incremental steps of your actual, um, and sorry, I just clicked there. Here, let me undo that. One click is like this really, really light shade of gray. You probably can barely see it. And then you can see the transition into the second click. I passed over this uh, one more time and then I did it again, but this, this is a third click. So I clicked once, passed over, got that. I had to unclick or lift my finger off the mouse and then click again and drag over to get another shade of paint on top of that. And all the way down, this represents eight separate clicks and you'll see that in the live demonstration here in a second. And the last one, which, you know, poor, poor penmanship by me, but whatever. This is with the opacity at 100%, which I highly recommend everyone keeps their opacity at 100%. Uh, very rare instances that you need to change your opacity when you're painting in, but uh, I'll leave that up to you. And then the flow is at 25%. Now, the cool thing about flow is, you do not have to pick up your mouse or pick unclick on the mouse or pick up your Wacom pen or whatever. Uh, you can just build it in and I'll kind of show that here because I'm on that adjustment layer uh, where I'm only clicking one time, but I'm getting all the way to pure black. And if I just barely click, I'm getting a gray and then I can cover over this. And that's the beauty of flow. I can build up an adjustment and I don't have to unclick, right? I can build up the adjustment by just simply passing back over it time after time after time after time until I get to the full uh, buildup of what I'm looking for. My recommendation, don't get so caught up on the numbers. Instead, find a flow that works for your editing style. So I like mine to be at 25 whenever I use flow. And I know about how that's going to blend in, especially when I'm doing dodging and burning. So don't don't worry so much about the number. Just find one. I recommend that it's definitely at the maximum 25 and at the minimum 10. So anywhere between 10 and 25 those are fair values for you to work off of and and really build up whatever it is that you're trying to do let's see here I'm, i told you that i was going to show you the opacity uh at 25 percent so that was this adjustment i'm going to create a new adjustment layer now if you're curious as to how i'm painting with colors uh, if you go to the local adjustment and down at the bottom you click the blue circle that says paint with color and then you can click inside of the box. Uh, and I'm actually gonna use a different color for this tutorial just to show you that 
I am working off of something. So I'm just going to go with like a red orange looking color. And we're going to make this one opacity 25. So I'm just going to click in there, enter that. And we're going to change the flow to 100. All right. And what I'm going to do is color in. And as you can see, I'm already painting. And notice that I'm painting back over the exact same areas, but nothing's building up. This is the difference between flow and opacity whenever you're using these two features to, you know, uh, adjust your option brushes. Now, don't worry about uh, this pass that happened over here because I went over another layer. It added on top of it. OK, now. I'm going to start another pass where I'm right here. And as you can see, it's adding in a little bit more density and it's becoming less opaque, right? Or less see through. That's all opacity is. But I can paint back over it and it's going to give me an even cover of that particular click. I unclicked on my mouse and now I'm going to click again and look. I get an even darker color because it's actually adding in that next set of opacity layer on top of it. And then if I come over here, it gets a little bit darker and you you'll continue doing this until, you know, or you can continue doing this. I, I don't recommend this method uh, unless you're looking for an even paint uh, over a particular object or person or whatever. If you only want to go one time and then watch the build up, uh, there can absolutely be an application for opacity. But I have found that flow just works so much better uh, when it comes to controlling this, uh, because these are very obvious blends. The blend here, with the exception of what I have going on, uh, you know, going to the darkest piece is very natural and you know it, it translates into a photo a little bit differently so let's go and find a photo and i will show you this dodging and burning technique that i was talking about okay so here's a photo that we're going to practice the dodging and burning technique on what we're going to do is hit ai auto and that's just going to do the basic exposure adjustments. I talk about that uh, in my basic editing tutorial. But what we're really going to do is come over to the local adjustment tab. Now, this time, I'm not actually going to paint with black. Instead, what I want to do is paint with exposure because I'm going to label this the burn layer. All right. So that way we know what's happening here now. As I said, I personally I always leave this at 100. And I put my flow to about 25. Uh, and for this tutorial, so you kind of get what I'm doing. I'm going to hit 50 because I don't think it's going to be strong enough. So I'm going to hit 50. And all that really means is uh, about half of whatever I make this adjustment is going to go through on my first pass. And I'm going to bring that down just a little bit and throw in a little bit of blacks. Uh, okay. So all I want to do is burn maybe some of these uh, brighter areas into the shadow. I don't really want to do this. Uh, so Please don't judge my photo editing skills because I'm burning something, but I'm clicking and I'm dragging and then I'm just bringing that right on over. All right. Now, let me show you the mask because I think you can see a little bit better. So that's at 50% on the flow. If I bring this down to 25 or I'll bring it down to 10, right? the uh, 11 is good enough. Okay. And then I'll make a brush, make my brush a little bit larger and I'm just going to paint over this. You see how that's not um, showing up a whole lot. 
Now, if I were to paint and go back over these areas, I'm unveiling more of the effect in the image, all right? And that's what I mean by the buildup. So let's go ahead, hit view. This is gonna look awful. There's a big black spot right there in the middle. So let's hit reset, get rid of all that nonsense. And instead of dodging and burning, let's go ahead and adjust those. And what we're gonna do instead is change the temperature because I think you'll be able to see that a lot better, right? So I want this to be more of a warm uh, image, especially on these highlights. So I'm just going to paint over this highlight area. And as you can see, it gave it a little bit more warm tone. If I paint over it again, it's gonna go a little bit more ex exaggerated and a little bit more exaggerated, a lot more exaggerated. And that's the buildup that I'm talking about. Now, again, we don't want that. So now let's do something that would be a little bit more natural. That's too much adjustment being added. So I'm just gonna bring that down a little bit and I'll paint right over here. And that looks so much more natural. Very, very few people will be able to look at this and say, there's an adjustment brush that went over those rocks, right? So, there's that. And then maybe I really want to capitalize what's going on down here. So I'm going to paint in a lot more. Again, I only have my finger on the mouse click once and I'm just going over this area until I feel like I got this just where I want it, right? And then I'll come down here and you can see that the effect is way less in this area than it is over here. Now, let's make a new adjustment and we'll go with lighten this time. And I wanna open up this shadow area. I'm gonna paint this in ever so slightly. And eventually what's gonna happen is this dark shadowy area is going to build up so i'm not exposing a whole lot but look at the blend here it goes from dark to gray to a little bit more white until it's more revealed right here in the center and eventually it'll look like a hundred percent of that particular edit is going in here okay one of the other ways that you can use this is i am going to Make another adjustment this time i'm going to hit darken and i'm going to bring down the blacks and i'm bringing the exposure down a lot okay with a fairly large brush i'm just going to sweep across the bottom here and i'm making almost a vignette-esque uh a vignette you know like no one will think anything different right this helps with subtlety i talk about that in my in my photo editing uh tutorial and we can make this a little bit smaller and you know just get that really in there and you can do that with all of these adjustments one of the other things that you can do is throw in some detail right so we'll bring up the structure a little bit I still have my flow set to 11, so I'm not adding a whole lot at one given time. I'm just going to make a big pass all the way over on all of this. Now, where it would be a good idea to use opacity is probably with structure, right? Because we don't want to over sharpen our images. So what I may want to do is bring my opacity down to maybe 30% on this one. And I know that if I make my brush large enough, all I'm gonna do is make one big pass. But if I'm painting back over here, I'm not adding anything more except for maybe if I 
make this a smaller brush. I can paint over it again. And now I'm adding detail into a little bit more of the image and then I can paint over it again, add detail in just that area. And then I make my brush a little bit smaller and now I'm adding more structure and detail. And just so it can be seen, I'm gonna really crank this up and then hit the Z key to get my zoom tool. And that looks really, really crunchy. Not the way that I prefer to have my photos edited. All right. Uh, but if we go and look at the mask, which look at that, we have this really nice, even paint of structure all over the image. And then we have these additional passes where the opacity one, my brush was getting smaller and the opacity was going less, or I'm sorry, more and more and building up until it's pretty much showing the whole thing. So there you have it. Uh, let's summarize real quick though. Opacity is going to give you an even sweep per, opacity is gonna give you an even sweep per click. One click gives you one even pass, no matter how many times you go back over it in that click. As soon as you let up off the, the mouse button and you click again, you're going to get another layer of the paint on top of that and so forth and so on all the way until you get to 100% of the color or the adjustment on your image. Flow on the other hand, you can get 100% of the adjustment in one single click, depending on how many times you pass over and over and over and over on that paint. Both of them have a place, as I just showed you. You can use opacity, you can use uh, flow. I have a preference to use flow to build up the things that I want to build up, uh, especially when you're doing makeup. That may be uh, another tutorial, um, adding digital makeup to an individual. I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, and if you did, smash that like button. And if this is your first time here at Free Will Photos, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Uh, I post videos very regularly on this channel, helping new photographers learn how to use their gear and the software to get their creative vision out into the world. So until the next time, I want you guys to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.